I've pulled up the electrical sample project that Autodesk released with Revit 2024. I would take a look at how this project is put together, take a look at the one line, see what kind of model they have as the example for electrical in Revit. So let's start in the project browser here and let's look for that single line diagram. If we search for single, we find some families, maybe it's under one line or diagram or riser. Okay, so they didn't include a single line diagram in here, but that's all right. We're going to go ahead and uh, make that ourselves. So I'm going to go here to a view and I'm going to make a drafting view. We will call this our one line diagram. I'm going to go ahead and create uh, a one line. There's a couple different ways you can create a one line. Uh, and so I'm going to be using ElectroBIM for this. We can generate a one line. We can also generate a riser. So we'll start with a one line. That's more of a top down view. When we generate the one line, you can see all the electrical equipment in the project. They've actually got quite a bit in here. We'll go back and take a look at this uh, once we've looked at the one line. But uh, here's the switchboard. So we'll go ahead and start there. We've got all these panels connected. So we'll insert the switchboard and generate a one line for this project. There's the one line based upon the uh, devices that have been inserted, all the electrical equipment and their connections. So we've got this big uh, switchboard up at the top. Looks like there's a couple sections below that and then uh, a bunch of panels down at the bottom. So that's kind of a one line, a top view, a top down view, kind of going from the top to the bottom, looking at just how everything is connected. We can also create a riser diagram and we'll go ahead and generate that, that as well. This is gonna be a left to right view and it's gonna have elevation taken into account. So we'll go find that switchboard again and we'll go ahead and insert a riser here. There's the riser. So again, you can see we've got this main switchboard uh, and then you've got those other panels connected to it. And you can see that it's feeding these other panels, which kind of look like they're feeding uh, the, these probably the, the sub panels feeding different uh, spaces in the building. Uh, a lot of them uh, are feeding multiple floors. Some of them are feeding just a single floor with multiple panels on that floor. So this is what it looks like uh, in a riser. The riser that it generates, it's a pretty good riser, but there's always a little bit of cleanup here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up a couple things just to make this look a little bit better. That gets our feeders cleaned up, so at least a little bit more readable. Uh, we can go ahead and take a look at how this is all arranged. So we've got that switchboard again, and it's got some uh, large breakers on here. It's got this main panel, and then all of those breakers are zero amps. If you look at the downstream panels from those, those are all, they don't have bus sizes on them. So we'll need to take a look at that and see what's going on there. Maybe uh, figure out if we can get that cleaned up a little bit. Uh, and then all the downstream panels, it looks like uh, it's a mix of 100 and 200 amp panels in this project. Now this riser as drawn is pretty big. If you're doing this for a real project, you'd actually want to break it out into multiple different drawings. Revit only can do a single, uh, drawing from a drafting view. So you can't actually break this drafting view into multiple drawings. So what you need to do is create a second drafting view. So we've got this riser diagram here. I'm gonna go ahead and just take out this whole section. Uh, we're gonna move this to a different uh, diagram. So we'll make a new riser diagram. We'll call this riser in diagram two. And we'll generate that uh, half that's gonna live on this diagram. So that was uh, starting with main two. We'll just insert this on this other drafting view. So there's that partial riser diagram. Here's the other part. And you probably want to put some annotations in here. We'll go ahead and put some text. We'll say to riser sheet two. Uh, depending on how you're, you know, everything's laid out, you'd have a better name for that other sheet. Over here, we're going to need to have the uh, sheet that we're coming from. Note that we're coming from that other sheet. And then maybe we'll put a continuation symbol on there to make sure it's clear that this uh, feeder is being broken. And put that continuation on the other sheet as well. So we have this riser diagram separated across two drafting views, and then we can put it on two different sheets for the final publication of this project if we were doing that. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this is modeled in 3D just to see how this is all laid out. I'm going to pull up the just electrical model and you can see that uh, there's a bunch of equipment down here and you can see the, the panels are laid out in the project. Uh, it actually has a transformer over here, which wasn't obviously connected to that switchboard. If we go back to our one line diagram, we can run the highlight device and we can select the switchboard and we can see, okay, it's this piece here. So this is where that switchboard is. Uh, if we take a look at the, this enlarged view, we can see how it's laid out. 
So the switchboard has good breakers in it, but the rest of these are are weirdly sized. We have a bunch of 20 amp breakers. Uh, the, those MB panels don't actually have a bus size. So we can go ahead and clean that up just a little bit to make this make a little bit more sense. So taking a look at it on this one line diagram, it's all these MB panels that are all, uh, don't have any bus sizes on them. I'm gonna go ahead and select them all and we're gonna modify all of those and give those a bus size. They would need to be a little bit different because they do have different loads on them. Since this is just a sample project, we're gonna go ahead and set them all to 300 amps. That's not quite big enough for one of them, but it's big enough for all of the others. We'll just go ahead and leave all of those at 300. And once we've done that, now we have the 300 amp panels. Now we've got 300 amp breakers. So that's gonna work a little bit better. This one uh, panel here is feeding this HDP, which is an 800 amp panel. So this one probably needs to be a little bit bigger. We can change just that one panel. When you use ElectroBIM for your calculations, it does take over sizing of your breaker. So previously you would specify those values and then they're never gonna be touched. Now ElectroBIM is actually setting them for you. So if you use it on a project that you previously did work on and then start using ElectroBIM, it's gonna overwrite some of your breaker sizes. So when that happens, it does display this screen. This is just on you know projects that you converted and it'll show you those old breaker ratings and then the new ones. And you can see here that there are a number of breaker ratings that have been changed. There are a number of breakers that were these 20 amp breakers that uh, have now been resized. I've got an old copy of the project I can pull up here. So this is what the project looked like before we ran those calculations. Yeah, if we look at main one, which is fed from switchboard, all of the breakers were 20 amp breakers. And then this MB13, again, all 20 amp breakers. And that 800 amp panel downstream, this HDP, uh, it's an 800 amp panel. It's actually connected on circuit four. The description is PP05. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there, but it's actually feeding HDP. And it's got a 20 amp breaker feeding the 800 amp panel. So if you just leave Revit to size these breakers, it's actually not doing any sizing and you have to make sure you get all those correct. Uh, ElectroBIM actually does handle that. So we'll go ahead and take those sizes and then set them for you. You can see all the different places the ElectroBIM chose new breaker sizes. We can pull up those same panel schedules and see here, if we take a look at this main one, we've got different size breakers here. And that MB13, again, different size breaker sizes that actually match the downstream panels. Now we can do a fault calculation and a voltage drop directly in Revit. Again, we've got all these extra panels. We'll take a look at those in a moment, but uh, ignore those and we'll scroll down here to the switchboard. And we're starting with an infinite fault uh, because nothing's been set for this. Uh, so we've got some really high faults and we're actually not connected to that transformer. So let's get this cleaned up to get a better looking fault calculation. And then we can go take a look at the voltage drop as well. So on this riser diagram, I can insert that transformer. So I'm going to do the insert link, find that transformer. Okay. Then we have a T1 here. That's uh, probably that transformer. We'll insert it as a utility transformer graphic. Put it here on our one line. And you'll notice it's not actually connected. There's no connection that's uh, happened in Revit yet. We can use the power command to make the connection. We'll choose the switchboard and we'll power it from that transformer. And that transformer voltage is actually 480. So the switchboard is 208. And let's go take a look at what's going on with that transformer because we do have a mismatch here between our voltages. Let's highlight that device. So here's that transformer in the model. And if we scroll down to the distribution system, it is a 480 volt. So let's change that to a 208 volt transformer, which is what it's labeled as, but this is just text. So this text up here can be whatever you want. Uh, it actually has no bearing on the uh, electrical modeling. So let's change this to a 208 volt transformer. Uh, now we can run that power command again, select the switchboard, connect it to the transformer, and now it makes the connection. And let's take a look at this transformer because it's labeled as a 3000 kVA transformer, but that's just text because Revit doesn't have a place to put that. So ElectroBIM doesn't actually know the size of that transformer. So we'll go ahead here and we'll specify this as a 3000 kVA transformer. So now ElectroBIM knows uh, that that's how we're intending to model this. Since this is the utility transformer for your fault calculations, generally you get a fault value from the utility as the starting fault. So let's go ahead and fix this uh, 65,000 amps. And that'll be the starting basis for our fault calculation. Now that we have the transformer modeled properly, it's connected. We can run that calculation again and go take a look at the fault in the project. Every time we run our calculation, it's going to bring this circuit comparison back up just to remind you that, hey, it made some changes. Once you're okay with the state of your project, if you erase this uh, uh, schedule, it'll stop showing up to you. Now we can take a look at the fault calculation. So I'll pull up our fault schedule. 
And now we have the transformer uh, above the switchboard. So we've got a more complete electrical model here. You can see that we've got the 65,000 amps for fault. And then the fault at all of the downstream panels is being calculated. So we've got the fault shown there, uh, all the distances to the panels being pulled from the, the location of those panels on the model. In addition to the fault calculation, we also have the voltage drop. Scroll down here to the actual electrical model. You can see the voltage drop at each uh, panel in the project. So we've got the voltage drop on the feeder. And then we also have the voltage drop on the branch circuit. So we list the maximum branch circuit voltage drop. You can also look at the voltage drop for each branch circuit if you want to. When we're doing this calculation, we upsize the feeders and the branch circuits automatically. You can specify uh, what you want to size to. We're currently sizing the 2% voltage drop for the feeders, 3% for the branch circuits. Any feeder or branch circuit that it upsizes, we have this voltage drop review. So we can take a look at what uh, feeders needed to be upsized. And then you as the engineer can go back, review what's happening and make sure that you're comfortable with this engineering. So we can see here that this P102 panel uh, had this 3% voltage drop as being fed uh, ultimately through the switchboard. So we had to upsize this uh, switchboard feeder and then also that uh, P102 feeder. And when we did that, we got our voltage drops down. Uh, it did uh, drastically increase the size uh, of this feeder to the switchboard. So you, you know, that's something where you might want to go back and take a look at that as the engineer. Are you comfortable with using a feeder that size? Maybe you want to switch from copper to aluminum for that run. Uh, but this gives you the, the feedback that you need to make the engineering decisions. Then there's a couple branch circuits that are a little bit on the long side. Uh, so they had voltage drops over that 3%. So the, they were upsized from number 12s to number 10s or from number 10s to even a number 4 or a number 6. Going back to our voltage drop schedule, we've got all this extra stuff that keeps showing up. So we're showing all of the electrical equipment in the project. This is a standard Revit schedule kind of filtered on electrical equipment. It's got all this extra stuff, these PV things. Let's go ahead and take a look at what those actually are. So I can take this PV panel. I can run our highlight panel command. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is a whole solar system they, ha they have modeled for this project. So this project included uh, some solar panels. And they modeled all of these PV panels and all the connections in Revit. Revit's probably not the best place to do a solar design. So if you actually were doing a solar design, you're probably going to step out to a, a dedicated solar package for that design. Um, I'm not sure that you'd necessarily want to do all of this modeling in Revit, but that's what they chose to do. Uh, so that's what all this stuff is. If we go ahead and take a look at this family, you can see that they have modeled this as a panel board. Uh, and so anything that's a panel board, uh, Electrobim's picking up as a panel and you know just showing it to you. On this voltage drop schedule, you might want to filter out the, the PV panels and find some other way to filter this out to not show all that information. Uh, there's a couple other panels in there as well. We've got these other uh, panels here. Let's take a look at those. So these are the battery pa cabinets. So these are apparently batteries that are being uh, charged by the solar. And again, if we edit the family and take a look at how it's been modeled, these are modeled as switchboards. So that's uh, how they chose to model those. But again, a switchboard is going to be interpreted by Electrobim as a piece of electrical equipment that you might have things connected to. So that's why they're showing up uh, and we're kind of thinking of them as panels. Then also down here at the bottom, they've got all these wiring pull boxes. These are modeled. Let's take a look at this. Uh, so this is this pull box here. They've got all their conduit running to it. So they're kind of doing a, a more complete modeling of, you know, all of the conduit and whatnot. Uh, as the design engineer, you're not necessarily going to be doing all of this. This is something more that the contractor would be worrying about. Uh, but if you do need the 3D coordination, you might have to come in here and do this. But you would want to be coordinating with the contractor who's actually doing the construction before you lay, start laying this stuff out here. But we've got these pull boxes. And if we edit this family again, take a look at how it's modeled. This pull box is modeled as a panel board. Uh, so again, we're just seeing it as a panel because that's what it's been labeled in Revit. I'm not sure that's the best part type. If you change this part type to something else, maybe this uh, should be an equipment switch uh, just so it's modeled a little bit closer to what it actually is because there's really, you know, there's not like there's circuits in here. This is just a, a box. Going back to this riser diagram, when Electrobim generates it, it's using just that electrical equipment. So the things that are tagged as panels and switchboards and transformers. Uh, you sometimes show other stuff in here, uh, the larger motors and whatnot. So let's go ahead and put a larger motor in here. We've got this elevator panel and there is an elevator in this project. So we can put the elevator uh, symbol in here as well. So let's go ahead and find that in the project. We've got the EL panel. It has a single device connected to it. It doesn't actually have a load modeled, but we can highlight that circuit. 
And here is that device uh, in the electrical model. So it's down here in the basement. And we can insert a link to that on our single line diagram. So we'll take that device and let's put that on the riser diagram and let's model it as a motor connection. Put it in here. Electrobay will draft in the feeder for us. We've got this uh, circuit breaker kind of living off in space. We can swap out the graphic on this panel here to actually put a bus bar that we can connect that uh, circuit to. So let's change this. Let's change this from a just a panel to a panel with a bus uh, still fed from the top. Move this label here, pull this label down. And we could redraw this, or I'm just going to have uh, Electrobim redraw it for me. So now I've got that breaker inside the panel connected to the bus feeding this uh, piece of equipment. If you have more equipment, you obviously want to select those devices, the larger equipment, and get it on the single line diagram as well. So that's the single line diagram for the electrical sample project that was released in Revit 2024. I've been using Electrobim to guide all of our exploration of this project. You can get a free trial from our website at designmaster.biz. It's a fully featured uh, time unlimited trial. It will watermark the output. So when you're trying it out, uh, you have as long as you need to try the software. Just be aware it's going to put little EBEMs or it's going to change some of the values to negative ones as you're trying it. Uh, when you purchase a license, those will go away. So just bear that in mind as you're looking at the software. Uh, there'll be a link to the free trial in the show notes as well.